This is hard to hold on to. All right, this is called a point pattern because it's made up, it, the borderline is actually a series of points. This top line is your, is your top edge. There's a point right there. It goes down and it'll come back. I'm sorry, it goes down a little bit and then it'll come back to this point. So you've got a, a, a one-sided V and it goes parallel to this top line and then it'll come back in another one-sided V and I've got a, a dot where this stops and where this stops where this stops and where this stops these these two lines right here are parallel and they're the same length they're just shifted back so your V is offsided if you'll remember when I laid the pattern out in in the butt stock down here there's a, there's a point on the front of it, a V. Well, this just imitates and picks up on that V in the back. I'm trying to do this holding on to it instead of putting it in the cradle because um, it's a lot of trouble to put it in the cradle and I can just cut this by hand uh, and hold it with one hand and then I can erase my marks and go ahead and stain it. I've made a holder for this to do my finishing but I'm gonna go ahead and stick that holder on there. That way I can just put it in the vise and help me to do all this initial scratching. And that's all it is really is, a, is just a scratch to put it into your, uh, to go ahead and do the finishing. I just scratch my lines in so I can see them um, once, once my uh, finishes on there it's hard to do this it's hard to draw lines where you can see them it's hard to uh, hold pieces of tape and other things on there where where they can where I can tell what I'm doing once it's finished it's more difficult to do that so I always put my outside my lines in before I put my finish on just my border and my master lines I have put one coat on this buttstock of sealer. The forearm, I haven't put any sealer on it yet. I finished the buttstock first, and I'm kind of in a hurry on this, which 
I don't do much of being in a hurry. But uh, I've got a wild game dinner I've got to present at here in a couple of days, and I need to get the finish on this so I can uh, <clears throat> be checkering it at that game dinner. So I just got done sanding the first coat. It's been on there for 24 hours or so. And I'm fixing to put the first coat on the forearm, which I stained yesterday. And so this one's one coat ahead of everything. I did not used to do this until well, the last few years, but I had a friend that was a big fan of a tack rag and I couldn't figure out what in the world she was talking about always wanting to use a tack rag until I found out that it, if you'll dampen a, a cloth with mineral spirits, it picks up the dust. It really does. It'll remove the dust. And then I take a, an air hose and <clears throat> blow whatever's left off of it. This really does help a lot to remove dust. When you're finishing to this level and you want it absolutely slick as glass, uh, using a damp tack rag between sanding and putting your next coat on really does help. A friend of mine came in and, and was asking me if I was going to put two coats of stain on this, which I find kind of absurd. And I told him no, it didn't do any good. He and I got into a discussion on putting multiple coats of stain. Let me explain something about the physics of stain. Stain goes in, it does not seal, it just goes in. It's an additive that is absorbed. And it goes in as far as it can go into the wood grain, which is, I don't know, a few thousands for an inch or a little more. And that's it, you wipe off the excess. If you put another coat on or another hundred coats on and you wipe it off, it's not going to get any darker than with the first coat. If the first coat is put on to saturation and wipe off the excess, that's it. Doesn't get any darker. I've even seen people in paint stores put two or three coats of stain on it thinking they can get it to be darker. If you fill your bathtub up to where it's running over and then you add another 10 gallons is your bathtub any fuller? No. It's saturated. When it's running over, it's saturated. So adding more coats of stain is a misnomer or a, a misdemeanor or miss something. This idea that I can get it to be darker. The only way you can make it darker is not wipe it off. Just let it sit on the surface. And that's called supersaturation. And supersaturation is a dangerous thing because it's not, it's not bonded anymore. It's just sitting on top. And then your finish, when you put your finish on it, your finish bonds to the stain. And anytime your finish gets a little scuffed, you get a light spot because the stain is supposed to be down in the wood. It colors the wood. Paint sits on top. Stain goes in. Well, paint will go in too a little bit, but... You get the meaning. You don't you don't go with super saturation. That's cheating. Add more pigment, make it darker if you want to, but but don't add don't add more layers of stain expecting the wood to all of a sudden change its mind and absorb more of it. Wood's not made like that. There are rules. And when we break the rules it uh, causes problems. <laughs>
it, it's opened the grain and it's standing straight up. When you do that, it'll absorb more of what you put onto it next time. If you put stain, finish, whatever, it's going to absorb more of it because that grain is opened up. I had a, uh, uh, there was a gun shop down the road that I used to do a lot of work for. And Bob called me one day and he said, I got a, an M1 Jaron for you. Um, some people call it Garand. I think the guy's name was John Jaron. But he said, I, this thing is a, a real puzzle. He said, it's got three different kinds of pieces of wood on it, and they are all got the same cartouche. They're all the same serial number. It's the same gun. It was just made this way. You need all these pieces of wood to, to match, and they don't right now. Can you help us out? I went and got it. One piece, the buttstock was walnut. The top piece was a piece of maple, and the uh, the bottom, man, I may, may have got these reversed, but the bottom was uh, was birch. And that's unusual because you don't find much birch on a, it may have been a war piece where they just used what they had during the war. But anyway, <clears throat> went up there and got it, and I tried staining that piece of maple, and it was hard as a rock. The birch I got to be pretty close. I matched it pretty good to the walnut, but the, the maple just wouldn't take stain. So I sanded it with 100 grit paper, just scuffed it up a little bit and put some more stain on it. And it still was too light. So I sanded that off. And I took a wet rag and I wiped it down with a wet rag and let that grain open up. I let that dry and I put some stain on there that there looked like black tar. It had some brown in it, but it was real dark. And it matched. It matched perfectly. I was I was amazed. Bob was amazed. I threatened to kill him if I had to tell him what I did and all that, you know, the whole the whole nine yards. But that water trick opened it up. If you ever really need to make something super dark. Just wipe it down with a wet rag, let that dry and stain it. Second coat. Woohoo!